Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube family? This is Sammy Lager here representing Team JVS. I am back here again for another movie review. The name of this movie is called R Dollar Sign J. Now, this is a modern day adaptation of uh, Shakespeare's romantic tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. This was premiered at South by Southwest. Me, Lucas, and Jarrell are going to be giving you guys a whole lot of uh, coverage for that. Um, it's just been a crazy week with, you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League and Falcon and Winter Soldier and other films being screened by us like Nobody and um, the show Invincible. So it's been a lot, but you guys are going to get a lot of backlog coverage uh, between now and next week. So let's go ahead and kind of dap into it. So this film, I kind of was like, this seems really interesting just based on the fact that this looks to be completely filmed by, you know, like an iPhone, but it's deeper than just that. So the way that this film is crafted specifically is that every sequence is something that is executed through a, a phone or a camera or social media. So I'll give you an example. So say a person's walking down the street from a party like the character Romeo was at a certain point he went on his Instagram live and that's what we're seeing so we're, we're getting the story but it's from all these intricate specific ways so we're getting it so how that it would be so literally like as opposed to kind of like watching somebody literally living it out we're seeing what we perceive to be what's happening through the lens of people's text messages through conversations. Now, it is taking place from two specific points of view, which is from Romeo's perspective and from Juliet's perspective. But let's go ahead and to get into the actors and actresses specifically with this one, because I think that they did a really good job. So Juliet's played by Francesca Noel, and Romeo is being played by uh, Cameron Ingalls. Um, the bigger other characters, I would say, would probably be uh, Benvolio, uh, played by RJ uh, Siler. Um, he's been in some of everything. He's a really good actor. Um, Diego, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Tanico played the role of uh, Tibble. Uh, Sadiq uh, Sanderson has played the role of Mercutio. Um, and then a veteran actually played um, Juliet's father. And I want to make sure I pronounce his name correctly. I apologize. I'm going to get it wrong. So I'm not going to even try. Um, so what did I think about this? I actually really enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it because the reality is for me is I was kind of like to have a film be done completely through the lens of social media and through recordings and through pictures and through text messages. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. Like the, 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 the to do that, is so inventive and so engaging to me. I was kind of like, not that I was waiting for it to fail or drop, but I was kind of like, how is this going to play out? You know what I'm saying? Because there's so, it's, there's so many ways you can kind of do it. Because there are some loosely, very violent and, and terrible things that have been focused through the lens of social media. In 2020 alone, everything that we've seen, you know, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Instagram Live, there's been some heinous acts that have been shown through those, those lenses. But the difference is, this is a focal point. You got two families that are rivals that used to be friends and they take it and they spin it on his head. And I think that I will say that the ending for this, I, I like probably better than any of the other incarnations of Romeo and Juliet. So I, I'll, I'll say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's talk about the strengths of this movie. What did I think were the strengths? I think that the main actor, both actresses and actor of uh, Romeo and Juliet, specifically Romeo, I think he is an amazing actor. I think he does an amazing job, whether it is like he felt like a neutral guy. Like he felt like somebody that, yes, he had had befallen his family some terrible circumstances. But he chose to rise above. He tried to be good. He tried to do the right thing. And he's got friends and family that are around him on a continuous basis, trying to ice him up and hype him up. 
But I think that the way that he executed his his sincerity and like his innocence uh, for the role of Romeo is probably the best incarnation of Romeo that I've seen. Like line delivery alone, which I'll get into that as a negative and a positive in a second. I think that his execution of Romeo is really good. And I'll say that Francesca as well. Francesca and her execution of Juliet. This is the first Juliet I kind of was like, oh, okay. She's not the happiest of individuals. Like she's 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 damaged emotionally. She's dealing with stuff. Like the very first act of this, I was like, yo, this is a believable Juliet. And I think that the only thing that happens with her character later on is kind of like it befalls the story. The story arc keeps it in this bubble that you know where it's going. And you're kind of like, well, no, people are smarter than that. Like, no. But, you know, I think that's the only thing that kind of holds her back. But I think the execution of her acting is not the problem whatsoever. I also think that um, the role of, uh, I'm, I'm bringing up the actors right here. I think that uh, Sadiq, um, in his role as uh, Mercutio, I think he he went full method. Like he went on this level that I was like, yo, he is really going for this. Like he is really truly going for it. Like I think that his line delivery was probably the best out of everybody. But it was more so like his expression as to where he is mentally and emotionally that I was like, he's got it. Like he is going fully for it. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, I do think some of the weaker performances, probably Diego uh, Tin uh, Tinko. Um, I just, his Tibble, every scene that he was in, it kind of felt really telegraphed. It didn't feel like, I don't know, it just wasn't executed well. And I don't know if it was from an acting standpoint or way it was written or whether it was the next part that I think is a negative and a positive, which is the verbiage. So even though this is all taking place modern day, present day, and even the way they're texting, they're texting in regular dialect that you would normally text. But their language and verbiage is not that. <laughs> their language and verbiage is so Shakespearean and, and all intricate and all the isms and all the different um, conversions of dialect um, that you would get from any form of classic version of this story. And to be honest with you, sometimes it just doesn't work. It, like not everybody can really e e effectively execute it that well. And I think that, you know, the character Tibble, like the execution of those, it just didn't work for him. And I think that where you got somebody like uh, Sadiq in Mercutio, it did, like he went for it. But then it's kind of like in between buffers between Romeo and Juliet. And I was kind of like, yo, do I need a, do I need subtitles on right now? <laughs> because like I'm in it, I, I see them going for it. And I see that this is a great way of doing it. But I just don't know if they should have went that way. Maybe they just should have just did it like normal. You know, I think that the one thing that I'll say about it, and this is why I'll leave it at a positive and a negative, is I think that it shows the capability of the actors to be able to effectively do it. And yet the problem is that some of the actors can't. And I think that that's where it hurts and helps this specific situation. Um... But yeah, I, I really did like uh, Romeo um, hashtag J, uh, or sorry, <laughs> R hashtag J. Um, I think it is interesting and, you know, different enough and immersive enough that it is definitely worth a watch. It is one of those ones that I was kind of like, you know what, I'm really glad I actually saw this because I, I kind of was like writing it off like, yeah, it looks like a cool premise. But I didn't know the execution was going to work. In some places, it doesn't. I think from a pacing standpoint, that the way that the dialogue is coming through, it doesn't help the pacing or the processing of what's really going on because you get lost in the sauce. If it wasn't for, you know, the engagement uses of technology and social media, then the intrigue wouldn't be as engaging as it is. Because there's moments that happen that are being recorded and you're just kind of like, the main character is like, oh, my gosh. And you can hear the breathing in the background. I think that the way that they use the sound design as well as the editing, I think that's really good. I think it's just poor setup circumstances, poor acting moments that hurt the film. And I think a part of that also is the verbiage that makes it feel unbelievable, even though it is based on a believable circumstance. And I think that's the crux and the issue of the movie, but it's also the 
the the things I find positive about the film. I'd rest this at a seven point five or I'm sorry, or this is at six point five or a seven out of ten. Um, I definitely did enjoy it, and I would definitely watch it again, um, just off of the execution of the way they designed it in in and of itself. And again, I think there's some very strong performance into this, and there's some very equally weak ones, which is very odd. Sometimes it's just one or the other, but this one um, took me by surprise. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell button, and stay tuned for a lot more coverage for South by Southwest from Team JBS. I'll talk to you guys soon.